They were actually dismantling sections of the Berlin Wall today as jubilation spread across East and West Germany. East Germans by the thousands poured into West Berlin, looked in the shops, went sightseeing, and for the most part, went home again. But will they stay? That's our story tonight. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Take a look at a couple of these live shots now of what's going on on the Berlin Wall. There it is, early morning Berlin time. You notice that hole in the wall? Well, that's what's causing it. It has become, as Barry Dunsmore had told us just before we went on the air, something of a cottage industry in East Berlin and West Berlin tonight. This business of chipping away and hammering away and breaking away pieces of the wall. And if it goes on like this, the question of how long and whether the wall will stand will indeed become a moot issue. At times today, onlookers might have been forgiven for thinking that the entire population of East Germany was pouring into West Berlin in a sort of political hemorrhage. In point of fact, only 100,000 East Berliners took advantage of their newly granted freedom today. And curiously enough, they demonstrated that the East German government's gamble in allowing free passage may be paying off. Most, indeed almost all of those who passed through the Berlin Wall from east to west today were nothing more than day trippers. They came, they saw, they shopped a little, some of them, and then they went home again. It may be that by granting East Germans the freedom to do what has been denied for so many years, staying in the East may become an acceptable option. We'll be talking about that with the U.S. Ambassador to East Germany a little later. But first, another extraordinary day on both sides of the Berlin Wall. Here's our senior foreign correspondent, Barry Dunsmore. At 3 o'clock this morning in East Berlin, workers with heavy equipment we're in the process of taking parts of the Berlin Wall down. The intention is to create a dozen or more crossing points to make passage to the west even easier. An estimated 100,000 East Germans had come to the west today, but West German Radio said that of the first 50,000, only 1,000 actually planned to stay. Though these are very early days, perhaps East Germany's gamble is paying off. When the fruit is no longer forbidden, it may not taste as sweet. Certainly, there were today some very sweet moments for Berliners east and west, providing a jumble of sights and sounds. East Berliners started the day by lining up for visas, which they'd been told would be needed today. Before long, however, the police were swamped and the visa requirement was waived. East German border guards suddenly treated politely people they might once have shot for trying to go to the West. East Germans shed tears of joy. They drank champagne and sang drinking songs like, Oh, such a day it is for us. And they spoke words of defiance. The wall will fall, maybe not at once but maybe in a few years. There were lineups in the West, too. At the bank, where East Berliners qualify for a one-time only $50 gift from the Bonn government. This financed many a shopping spree today, though ultimately a lack of hard currency is likely to curtail a lot of East German foreign travel. While all the fun was going on in the West, East Germany's Communist Party Central Committee was adding the other elements to the East German gamble. Communist Party boss Krenz repeated to a rally of his faithful that there would be free elections with a secret ballot and a series of radical reforms, all designed to make people more inclined to stay. Members of the opposition group New Forum held one of their usual vigils at the Gethsemane Church in East Berlin tonight. Some had earlier gone to the West to take a look. And so uh, we were today, the whole day, in, in West Berlin. It was great, uh, a very great feeling for us and for them too. 
new forum, which is to become East Germany's first legal opposition movement, ought to be ecstatic with all that's happening. But perhaps it's another sign that Mr. Krentz is making an impression that they've joined his campaign to publicly persuade East Germans not to leave, at least not permanently. We only can tell to everybody to stay here and to work with us uh, and uh, to uh, uh, have the same hope as we uh, that we can change uh, uh, important uh, and crucial things here. That actually was also a message at the huge rally outside West Berlin City Hall addressed by West Germany's top leaders. Chancellor Helmut Kohl, who had broken off a visit to Poland, told the crowd, we are and will remain one nation and we belong together. Thus, the breaching of the Berlin Wall has put the whole issue of German reunification on the front burner. As might be expected, opinion is divided on the subject. The NATO Secretary General, who is German, is for it. Well, first of all, I think we are not yet there. But a united Germany as part of a united all Europe, I think, is one of the goals of this alliance. But this alliance, as Margaret Thatcher, is sure in no hurry for German reunification. I think you're going much too fast, much too fast. You have to take these things step by step and handle them very wisely. Soviet spokesman Gerasimov today made no bones about Moscow's opposition to one Germany, nor did people from Europe's wartime generation. Let them visit Germany and their relatives at the other side, but please keep them separated. I think that um, they're doing the wrong thing. I think, well, they're separate, we'll have no, no more wars. But once they get together again, God help us later on in life. All this talk of reunification is making the East German authorities nervous. At this point, they're not ready to get married, although for the right price, they probably would like to be good friends. Ted? Barry, we're going to be talking at some greater length a little bit later in the program, but give us a sense of some of the concrete steps that the East German government is taking. Just sort of list them for us, in addition to just letting everybody come and go. Yes, there are some very radical ideas, Ted, in addition to the fact that they're promising free elections. They're talking about separating the roles of the party and the government, about putting the security apparatus under the control of the parliament, and uh, they have one or two other things that should make people pretty happy, including a guarantee of free press and freedom of assembly.